first video, it was not called a video yet, that I was ever in, was because of this fellow I met at a love in. His name was Alan Davio, a young curly haired photographer that I met at several different love ins, and he would take pictures of me at the love ins. And he, he asked one day, could he take a photo shoot of me? And I was thinking about being an actor at that time, and I thought, oh, why not? So he, he took these iconic kind of photos of me uh, with the flowers in my hair and everything. And uh, they've really served me well. <laughs> he gave me the negatives and everything. It was awesome. So I had this dress on, and I wore it a lot to love it. So this was one of the dresses I found in my friend's grandma's chest. I already uh, did a little video about my, my vintage clothes. And I still, believe it or not, have the dress, which is amazing. I could get it on one thigh now, probably. But he asked me, would you like to be in a short film it, with a band from England? And what do you think I said? <laughs> uh, gee, no thanks. No, I said yes. So he invited me to this old Hollywood mansion kind of falling apart and I walked into this big round room painted all psychedelic and there were standing in front of me was the Jimi Hendrix experience no one had heard of them yet the music wasn't out yet and there I was with Jimi Hendrix Alan Davio introduced me to the band and first he introduced me to Jimi because Jimi Hendrix was the the star of this short film but I, I was so overwhelmed. Just he had that jacket on with all the colors of what he always. He what a style he had. The one with the big eyeball on the back. And he right away went, "What are you doing later?" I think it was the first thing he said before hello. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> I had no idea. I don't even remember what I said to him. I, I don't know if I said anything. He was bigger than life. And then they put me up on a pedestal, and I wiggled my little butt all day behind Hendrix watching that eyeball on that jacket. And he had two sidekicks with him, Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding, who were also giving me the eye. And Noel Redding looked like he would be a little more controllable than Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> and I was a virgin and I wasn't about to give it up at that time. So I thought, well, okay, I, I might give him a little tumble. So I wound up with Noel, but that whole afternoon I frolicked around with them in this field behind this house and danced with them all day. It was all day hanging out with Jimi Hendrix and he was really cool. He was such a unique soft-spoken gentleman kind of guy and he wasn't British of course he's from Seattle but he you know started happening there and here's the little dress I wore. It's kind of falling apart now. Look how little I was. <laughs> Tiny, tiny little thing. So it's nice that I go have this dress. And I later got to see Hendrix because Noel brought me to New York. So that made me a super groupie. When you were taken on the road, you were no longer a groupie, you were a super groupie. And I went to their uh, manager's house, beautiful penthouse in New York. And my friend Chuck Wine was there. Actually, he wasn't my friend yet. That's the first time I met Chuck. That was a big one. He invited all the people smoking pot and hanging out in the living room and drinking to come into the next room. He was gonna call the four archangels out of the corners. And of course I was interested in that, but Noel didn't get up and go in there. So I sat there with Noel, but Jimmy got up there. He walked right into it and I could see him. He was in the, the I can still see it like it was yesterday because it was pretty majestic. He was sitting in this chair on the, this corner of the room and I could watch him while he was like, Chuck was going, me, hi, hello, and all this stuff. And he was, Jimmy was going, okay, where are they? He was looking for him. He believed. He was a very cool guy.